And one of the things we need to shift perspective on is stop trying to be happy. And I say that in the sense that happiness as an emotion is fleeting. It comes, it goes. Inner peace is a deeper way of living, not just feeling. Welcome back to Your Personal CFO Podcast, where we get to hear from entrepreneurs on how they're growing their businesses, staying on top of their finances, and not only succeeding, but thriving. To listen to previous episodes of the show, please go to our website, www.actionnowcfo.com. And now, for today's podcast, here is your host for the show, your personal CFO, Greg Levine. Welcome back, everyone, to another podcast. Thank you all for joining us. We are excited for another guest this week, and our guest this week is Chris Shea. Chris is a master counselor and life coach, author, blogger, host for Which Way is Life, and founder of Life's Journey Life Coaching. And with that, Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's uh, great to be here. Great to connect with you. Appreciate you coming on the show. And uh, we are excited to learn all about your mission and uh, what seems not just a business, but a mission in life. Would that be correct? That would be very correct. It, it starts as the mission first and what I believe and uh, continues from there. All right. Awesome. So uh, before we get to the business at hand, which is the business, can, can you give us a story just so we can get to, get to know you a little bit, something to uh, engage us all and uh, start this interview off well? Yeah, sure. I, uh, you know, most of my life I've always wanted to be helping people. I, I just didn't really know how best to do that. And the story that I like to tell is, you know, kind of the story of the beginnings of the business in the sense that I'm a type A person and I was always stressed, always anxious because I, I was always going and going and going. And it was kind of funny because I, I shifted from a, a corporate type job and uh, high up positions in that to go to a high school in a very rural area. And I at first was excited because, you know, when you work in a school, you get the summers off. And I was like, hey, this is great. I got a whole summer free. But that ended up killing me for a type A person who's been working 20 some years, just nonstop every day. And then now all of a sudden I had three months. And when we got to that point, it, it, it was kind of funny because week one was great. Week two started to drag and week three was like, what am I doing? You know, I, I got to find something to do. And uh, it was actually torture. So, yeah, that's kind of where things uh, got moving after that. So you started to research and you found, I don't know, master counselor, life coach, these sort of programs to get involved in? Well, I was already doing the counseling work. Um, I've been a counselor for a little over 20 years. and uh, But what I did do was the beginnings of what has now become my business of uh, life's journey is that what I found as the weeks went on that if I started to do some journaling work, that might help. You know, maybe I can get my thoughts and emotions out there and then try to analyze them and try to fix it. And what I decided to do with the technology is, well, instead of just buying a journal and writing, why don't I just put a blog up? And maybe somebody else will be uh, inspired, or if not, that's fine. But I'm just going to do this for myself, and if people follow it, great. And that's really where the, the humble beginnings were, is, is that it was just a blog for a while. And that's now turned into a business and is now turned into doing the consulting work, the writing work, speaking nationally. I, I have clients who are local who come and see me in my office and those that I see over the Internet. So within a, a matter of you know just a few years, the blog moved into the, this whole business. And, and now if you were to go to the blog, it, it's a whole business website that happens to include a blog. All right. So you are a few weeks into this summer vacation, which is your first summer vacation in a long time as now on the uh, employee side. And you uh, are trying to figure out what to do with your time and you start to do a journal and then it becomes a blog and you're blogging about what you're doing each day or what you're doing to kind of recreate this phase of your life? Or what was the blog actually talking about? All of the above and then some. So it, it was a bit about what I was feeling. It was a bit about what I was doing. It 
was some of my uh, philosophical musings. Um, you know, as, as I was sitting there and something would pop in my head and I would kind of process it through. I, I originally from the beginning called it life's journey because I fear, well, this is my life's journey. But over time, what I began to realize is that taking mindfulness and using those techniques combined with my counseling, combined with my spirituality, I was able to fashion a way of living that slowed me down enough that eventually, now this all takes time, but eventually found an inner peace. And I had not had that for decades. So what I then did in evolving from that is that's where the business end came in because I figured if I was able to figure this out, maybe I can help others to figure out their path as well. And my mission is now turned into how do I help people find their inner peace and whether that means in their daily lives, in uh, how they run their business, in their work life, really doesn't matter, but it is how do you find that inner peace in the situations where you find yourself? And that's where the the counseling life coach and consulting, uh, you know, all come together. So, you know, I'm trying to help people to find that because I realized that I myself was able to do it. So I'm, I'm sure others can do it as well. Well, that's, that's powerful. How, how long did it take you until you sort of had some sort of epiphany that you said, wow, this has uh, had a big, transformation on me and i didn't even realize this was coming i would probably say just under a year it wasn't within that summer you know it, it took longer than that so i i would say close to a year and and it still continues you know but at least for that initial epiphany and and then to really start to shift gears and you know if, if you were to look at my blog writings at, at this time you know, they started shifting gears as well into more of that interior and how do you find this inner peace versus, you know, blog writings where I was just throwing down whatever was kind of on my mind at the time. You know, now we're getting more focused into this. And I would say that was a, a good couple of years before I uh, decided to make this into a business and uh, go from there. It's interesting that you were... Uh interested to put that out there because i'm sure it's pretty personal and uh you know you're putting out there all these uh thoughts and all that stuff so was that hard for you to do or was that exciting to kind of see the feedback you get from it a bit of both i'm typically not one that wants to talk about myself and as a counselor of, of so many years i'm used to asking people questions about themselves and hearing more of them not sharing of me so one of the struggles I, I continue to have is, is I, I think I even need to share more of me because a, a lot of what I'm sharing is still more on the technical level of how can you find that inner peace, where I think if a, a challenge that, that I would still give myself is I, I need to share a bit more and, and you know, learn that, you know, that's good, it's helpful, it's, it's okay, it would probably help me out a lot too. Mm -hmm. So how'd you uh, get the word out there? I mean, uh, just telling friends, family, were you just posting all over the place or kind of give us some marketing tips about how a blog can really transform into what it has? The blog I didn't do much with as far as marketing. Uh, I was putting it on different blog sites, on different um, chat rooms where bloggers got together. But as it really turned more toward the business end, that's where I branched out and started using a lot of social media to get that word out that, hey, here's this blog. And then as it morphed more into a business and I started changing the blog website into an actual business website, um, the social media really became the, the biggest push for me as far as marketing and, and trying to get the word out, at, at least in the, in the initial stage, that that's where that was. And as far as the feedback you were getting, did you get only positive? Did you get any negative? Because, uh, you know, you never know what's coming in next, right? Oh, exactly. You never really know. And really, it was all positive. It, it was people, you know, thanking uh, me for the message, people saying that, you know, I, I can relate to the message. So overall, it it, it was very positive. And I think that's what helped me, you know, also to move this in, into another level that we're not just going to stay on this, 
blog level, which is fine, but there's more. And, and I, I could be reaching more people in many different media and different ways than just writing a blog and putting it on social media. And is that why you sort of trend, you do like a podcast now and, you know, you're an author? Is that how that kind of all developed and, and what else worked? What was like more effective than just the blog? Correct. That's where then the podcast came in. And, and again, that was uh, another maturation that at the beginning when I decided, well, let's do a podcast. It really was more for the intention of reaching a larger audience in that if if you don't have time to sit down and read my blog, I'll read it for you on this podcast and then you just listen to the podcast. And it really just was a reading of my blog. What has now gone from that is the podcast has now morphed into I meet with guests and we talk about practical ways of, of finding happiness and inner peace and what's worked for them. And it, it's much more now of a dialogue and, and a podcast where a lot of practical information is shared and it doesn't relate to the blog at all. Um, so I think that has helped in then getting the word out because what that does is, helps you to become recognized in the area that you're trying to, you know, attract people. So, you know, where I can blog all I want about, say, different ways of, of finding this inner peace. Now, if I do that and talk to people who also are doing the same thing as I, that now puts me in the same field and same area as them. And that can lend credibility, which helps with the marketing, which, you know, is, is going to go on and, and increase the brand. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you definitely uh, tapped into something every th everybody's interested in, that's inner peace. So what are the tips, man? I mean, you're the expert. Uh, everybody's looking for inner peace. So you're the Yoda. Tell us. And, uh, Yoda's a good example. I, I love that character in, in Star Wars. But no, I mean, really, the, the short of it is, you know, if, if you really want to find an inner peace, you need to change perspective. And then a number one for what I talk to people about is, is change your perspective. And one of the things we need to shift perspective on is stop trying to be happy. And I say that in the sense that happiness as an emotion is fleeting. It comes, it goes. Inner peace is a deeper way of living not just feeling. So one of the things we need to do is stop looking for the fleeting emotions. And we need to shift our perspective on what we feel within ourselves, not what society says, is success. You know, when you look at a lot of life coaches out there, they're going to tell you that I can teach you how to be confident and therefore successful and make a lot of money. Uh, or, you know, I, I can teach you how to be happy and then be successful or the other way around, find your success and then you'll be happy. And that's fine if that's where you want to go with it. But again, those are fleeting and success. If you want to look at it as the definition of, you know, having lots of money and being well known, that's going to be a long shot to try to get there. And you might not get there. Not everybody be can become really rich and well-known. But everyone can be successful within their life. So let's change success and not put it as I get to the top of my field or I get well-known or I get rich. What if success is I am happy at doing the best at what it is that I do? You know, an, an example I've given in my writings is, to me, there's no difference to a CEO of a large Fortune 500 company and the employee of the month at the sanitation company. Because if both of them are doing their best at what they do, and if both of them love what they do, in my mind, they both have equal success. But society's not going to tell us that. Where do you think the notion that being well-known would be a factor in happiness came from? I blame a lot of our society and social media, and yet that's my biggest marketing tool. But 
No, I, I think people have gotten the notion when you look at social media and couple that with the explosion of reality TV that anybody now can become famous. When you look at some of these reality stars, you know, well, what are they famous for? And sometimes there's not much. They just happen to be on a reality show, you know, or, or people who become these YouTube sensations, you know, that they do something really dumb and all of a sudden they have a million viewers and then one of these reality shows pick them up. And now what are they known for? They're known because they are a YouTube sensation. So I'm not knocking any of that, but I, I think that gives this false sense that if this everyday person can do something stupid and put it up on YouTube, well, I can do something even dumber and put it up on YouTube and I'm going to become more famous as them. It, it, it's not. And, and I think, again, that's where we're missing the boat because that again is fleeting. You might become famous. You might get on some talk shows. You might get well known. That's not going to last. That, that comes and goes with the next YouTube sensation. So in today's high-paced, uh, fast-paced media, you're famous for a moment, then you're not. But if you're looking for success within yourself, success within your family, within what you do, that can stay with you. And that can help you to build an inner peace. And that is going to stay with you regardless of what other people know or don't know about you. What's up, everyone? It's Greg here. Hope you are enjoying the podcast so far. If you are an entrepreneur and your bottom line is not moving in the direction you would hope for, or you are just feeling stuck and need a push, I am offering a no-charge three-month strategy session to all listeners. Along with being an accountant, I was trained as a coach to help entrepreneurs set and achieve their goals and would like to extend a free strategy session offer to you all. If interested, please shoot me an email at greg at actionnowcfo.com. Thanks a lot, and now back to the show. Is there any person you've come in contact with that had a sense of inner peace that was, uh, it's almost like your inspiration, like your model for what you hope people to get to? There, there are a number of people that I've known, but honestly, the ones that I can think of off the top of my head are not people anybody else would know. You know, again, it's not the famous people. It's people who I have interacted with, worked with, become friends with, who seem to have this inner peace. And when I was in the midst of all the things that I was doing, there wasn't an inner peace. You know, and, and I, I would look at them and say, they've got something I don't. But it took me, you know, the, these years to figure that out. So... Uh, for me, it was knowing that it was possible helped me to find my way of making it possible, which is what I'm trying to spread to others to say, all right, I know there's normal, regular people out there who are living a, a very peace-filled life. And I know that I was able to work it. So let me explain to you how I did it. You t modify and take it to your own situation. You too can do it. So... What I, I'm trying to help people, you know, define is, is that these are very practical things that any of us can do to find the center piece. And I think one of the other things that steers people away from this is when you have these well-known, famous life coaches, which I'm not knocking them, just making a statement. I think sometimes people look at them and say, hey, that's an awesome message. That's wonderful but you're you and I'm me. You're this big famous person and I'm just little old me. So I can't do what you're doing to get the results that you got. What I'm trying to say is I, I'm just me and here's what I did. There's people I know who are just them and this is what they did. We can all do this. Do you still journal on a regular basis? Not as regularly as I used to, but yes, I still have a blog which is still on the website. And actually my website web address is still that original web address. I, I was, you know, told by many consultants, so you need to change that. You need to, you know, make it sound more business-like and more what you're doing. I, I'm thinking, no, no, I, I need to keep the origins and I need to keep myself reminded of the origins. 
so yes, I, I still do. Um, it's just not with the frequency that I used to do it because, you know, building your own business and having it as diverse as mine is, unfortunately, the, the downside is I don't have as much time to do that writing as I used to. Mm-hmm. I hear you. All right. Well, that's a good segue because this uh, podcast is we're trying to get a little bit more talking about mental toughness. So you're a great guest for that. And we want to know what are uh, maybe what's your definition of mental toughness and how have you learned some mental toughness lessons as an entrepreneur? I would say that the mental toughness is sticking with and accepting your reality and using that to your benefit. Where, you know, a lot of times people will talk about, you know, how bad their life is or how, you know, negative events are happening either, you know, to them, around them, near them, and become very discouraged with that. And and what I'm trying to look at is to say, why don't we, and especially, you know, after changing our perspective, but why don't we just accept where we are, the good, the bad, or the otherwise, just accept what it is. And from there, let's find out what do we need to do different. And that to me is part of that mental toughness because the mental toughness is saying, I need to look at this right in its face and say, here's what I'm going to do to fix this. I'm not going to back off from it. So taking that stance to me is part of that toughness. And, you know, when you look at being an entrepreneur and then especially at the beginnings of, you know, starting the business, there are a lot of times when you, you know, you get, either opinions from people or read business articles, you know, that start challenging you in in different ways that you didn't think you were capable of doing, you can either back off from that or you can face that, you know, you can read something or talk to someone and realize, Hey, maybe I need to do this, but do you have the humility to actually see that? I think the other part of the mental toughness is, do you have that ability to keep moving? You know, can you keep moving forward because starting the business is not going to be what you think it is day one? You know, I I have this grand vision of where I would like to see this business down the road, but I know it's not was not never going to be day one. And and we're and I'm still not poised yet to move it beyond uh, where it is. You know, I'm, I'm building that foundation now for my next step. So. You know, I think part of that mental toughness is when it gets tough, you look that square and say, all right, what do I need to do? And this doesn't mean that I need to stop doing the business. It just means maybe I need to come up with something different or be creative in a way of learning to solve this problem. Mm -hmm. Can you recall any tough decision you kind of had to make and uh, how you made it through that? For me, the the toughest piece was right near the beginning. When I had started it, I uh, actually had my first couple of clients and didn't even have an office yet. So I was trying to find space anywhere I could in, in this town just to like meet with some people and, and hope that they were understanding and flexible enough, uh, you know, for those sessions until I found the office and then. I found an office and, you know, now we're furnishing it and paying rent and all that fun stuff. And where at the beginning, when when I had officially started in um, November, I started with a pretty good caseload. I, it went from a couple and then doubled, tripled, and things were looking really good until January came. And for some reason, there were no new clients coming in in January. And the clients I was working with were moving on. And I found myself for the next couple of months with little to no money and the bills coming in. And that became tough because, you know, it's what do I need to do fast for, you know, marketing and and get the word out and get more clients? What went wrong? Why did they start coming all of a sudden? And, you know, now they're not. And I still got to pay these bills because I can't lose this space because then the whole thing is gone. So the struggle with staying on top of that and and what I had to do is, you know, creatively shift money around 
beg and plead the the building owner, you know, like, can I have at least one more week, like, please, and, and just getting creative with, with how I was able to do that for a couple months until I was able to get that word out. And that became through networking with other people in the area. And then I just happened upon what had become and still is my biggest uh, resource for people, and, and that's uh, Psychology Today listing. And I just happened upon that uh, through another connection and didn't have the money to put in my listing, but discovered there was this, you know, like you get two months free or something. So it's like, all right, I can handle free. And threw it out there, and all of a sudden, I started getting lots of calls. And when the two months came up, I was like, well, let me do another month or so and see what happens. And the calls kept coming. So between the word of mouth referrals where I started the network in the area and that I was able to climb out of that. Um, And from that point on, that that was three years ago, from that point on, I have not been in that similar situation. So I've learned from that and from that learning, hopefully not make that or similar mistake again from, you know, the beginning. That was an awesome, awesome example, man. Because uh, if you weren't all in, you would have just, you know, let's just say this was a side job. You would have just, you know, been like, all right, I guess they're not coming in. Let's just keep on with the regular, regular gig. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. You know, and and I've seen people do that. You know, and and w- what I've mentioned to some people in in the consulting uh, work when I deal with some businesses, it, you know, is just that. You know, look, if if this is this important to you then you got to figure this out, you know, and I can help guide you, but, but you're going to have to figure this out and you're going to have to, you know, put a little suffering into this to make this work. But if you're not into it, you know, for one, then let's just bail now, because if you're really not into it, let, let's not even put anything into it. Cause why? But the other part also is at some point we've got to make the decision. Is this not working? Because, you know, it's just not the right business in the right place, or maybe this just isn't what you should be doing. You know, so at some point you got to also look at a reality. You know, I only won a couple months and and still was determined to make this work. Had this lingered on, that would have had to be my next question would be, yes, I'm so passionate, but is it the wrong business in the wrong place at the wrong time? And you got to start looking at that as well, because it might not be, my mistake it might just be those other questions luckily that wasn't true for me but i i I think we need to push on have that mental toughness but at some point also look at reality Mm -hmm. great awesome man okay so chris you are the uh, expert in uh, inner peace and uh, we want to know do you have any or do you recommend any specific routines people will do during their day during the week so that they can uh you know, keep that inner peace throughout their days and throughout their lives. You know, I, I really encourage people to meditate. And I know as soon as I say that, it tunes some people out. They're like, ah, I ain't going to do that. I don't have time for that. Don't Everybody talks about that. You hear me out. What I mean is, now, yes, you could do it in the traditional way. Find a nice spot, keep it quiet, light some candles, some incense, whatever. But I think meditation comes in many forms, and you really have to find it out for yourself, because here's the main goal. We all need to, throughout the day, stop ourselves. We tend to get very fast-paced and busy. And in that fast-paced and busy, what we end up doing is missing things. So what I find very important when I talk about meditation is you've got to find multiple times in your day to simply physically and mentally stop, take a couple deep breaths, and look around. Notice where you are. Notice what your body is feeling. Notice what your emotions are feeling. Just look around. And we're not judging it. We're not saying this is good or bad or, you know, I I feel stressed. I don't, I'm not even saying that. Just, Just notice it. Recognize it. Acknowledge it. After you pause in that for a moment, then we can start to evaluate. Do I need to make a little slight change right now in my day? Do I need to keep moving forward? Maybe everything is great. 
Do I need to clean something up before I move forward? You know, try to figure out what's going on and then think about how am I going to do that? And then start slowly moving forward. And that can be done within five, 10 minutes. That could be done at your desk. That could be done walking down your hallway in the elevator. I mean, wherever you happen to be, you can do that for five minutes. If you want to even do it longer, you could do it. If you have a spot to walk through the woods, walk through a park, sit on a bench, whatever it is, you can find a spot that you can slow yourself down if you want to change your perspective and get creative with it. Great advice, man. Thank you. Chris, this is awesome uh, speaking with you. And uh, before we let you go, though, as always, we have two uh, parting requests. Uh, the first is for you to plug away where uh, people can find you, connect with you, find your blog, find your books, find uh, your podcast, all that good stuff. And then once you are done plugging away, give us some parting advice to all the listeners out there looking for uh, some advice in life and business and anything. Awesome. Thank you. So really the best place for people to find me is just to go to my main website. And that's all one word, lifesjourneyblog.com. And if you just go there, you can find everything there. And that's where my blogs are, my current blogs. And you could go all the way back to blog number one is it, still on that site. My podcasts are there, links to other podcast pages of where all my stuff is. All my social media links are going to be found there, information about me, booking sessions with me, um, booking me for online sessions. I have a store. It's all at that site. So just go to that site. You'll find everything that you need to know about me. And if you can't, then send me a message and say, this is what I need to know and I can't find it. I'll tell you. And really, I think my my parting thing would be uh, one of my favorite quotes, and, and it's been... This quote has been put out to a number of different people or sources, so I don't know exactly who said it. Not me. I won't take credit for this, but I, I love this quote. I've used it for years. And it goes, we do not see things as they are. We see things as we are. And what that says to me is, if you are viewing right now yourself and your world as not as good as you would want it, not as peace-filled as you would want it, then where do you need to start to make that change? You have to start inside. If the world around you is not looking peace-filled, you probably don't have inner peace. When you find that inner peace, the world around you is going to start to look that way because it's all about our our how we feel about ourselves and that perspective that colors what we see around us. Wow. Great. Uh, great interview, man. Great to speak with you. Uh, appreciate the conversation. I, I, I've enjoyed it as well. Thank you for the opportunity. And uh, that will round off another episode of the show. And uh, we appreciate all your questions, comments, feedback. If you have any, uh, shoot it over to me, Greg at actionnowcfo.com or check us out on Twitter, CFO Greg. And uh, as always, we'll be back next week. Thank you all for listening to this episode of the show. If you would like to listen to previous episodes, please go to our website, www.actionnowcfo.com. Or if you have any questions, comments, and feedback, please shoot Greg an email at greg at actionnowcfo.com. Or shoot him a message on Twitter at CFO Greg. CFO Greg.